Hey folks, it's Mark Gentili from Sudbury.com. I've got an Earl Grey tea in my hand, a camera in my face, and that means this is tea with the editor. James Van Prague, Sylvia Brown, John Edward, each enjoys considerable celebrity status for claiming to be able to speak to dead people. But none are more popular than today's queen of spirit mediums, straight-talking Long Island medium star Teresa Caputo, who packed Sudbury Arena in 2016. Thousands of Sudburyans, however, already know the Nickel City has its own resident medium. Her name is Jay Lane, and like Caputo, she's a straight-talking, down-to-earth kind of gal, and she's a, a rising star in a multi-million dollar and maybe even multi-billion dollar industry. From personal appearances to one-on-one -on -one sessions to weekly Facebook live chats, She's an entrepreneur who's growing a thriving business out of an ability to connect with her thousands of fans in a very personal way. Whether you believe people can really talk to the dead, you can't deny Jay's talent for performance, nor can you deny her business savvy. I want to welcome my guest, Jay Lane. Hey, Jay. Very nice to meet you. Uh, I'm so pleased that you uh, agreed to sit down and have tea with me. I'm so happy to be here. You have no idea, but thank you so much for having me here today, Mark. Oh, you're very welcome. And, this, and we're in Cedar Nest, and I've actually, never yes. actually been here, and it's like the cutest little spot. Well, right away, I knew that I was going to connect with Spirit here because the first thing I heard was Idzi Piaf music when I walked in, yes. who is my mother's absolute favorite. Really? And actually, I can connect with the Spirit that used to work here okay. and who passed away a few years ago, whose name was Stella, and she worked here, but I could see and feel her yeah. so it's kind of interesting now what that must get tiring I mean if, you, if you're I mean how could you go on a go out on a shopping excursion or out for coffee without being bombarded with uh, with sensations that must be that must be exhausting you must fall into bed at night well, well I do you know especially if I'm channeling all day long it, it can get quite exhausting but you know what it's like that it's just a very natural thing for me mark yeah. and wherever I go I feel them and you know people say how do you turn that off how do I ask you to go blind for five minutes? You can't. And so it's just something I'm really used to and I ignore a lot, especially if I'm out in different places, but sometimes I can't ignore certain you spirits. You just walk up to people uh, having dinner at a table and look, I don't mean to interrupt your dinner. No, but I would never do no. that because I don't have a camera crew like Teresa does, you know. Yeah. But I'm sure I'd probably get my butt kicked, you know, we're, we're a northern community. Yeah. But no, I would never do that. If someone does ask me though, I, I will tell them if I'm sensing something, yeah. but I won't go up to a stranger and just started talking unless I had like I said that yeah. camera crew with me yeah you your career it has really sort of blossomed in the last few years I remember we did a sort of a photo series on you a few years ago yeah and at the time I think you were you, I mean you've been doing it for a long time but it seems like in the last few years it's really kind of exploded your career yeah I've been very very lucky I've had so many great people behind my career and of course yeah. my my spouse being number one who really supports what I do and he really um, he's not a self person he gives me to people really because he barely sees me but uh, you know I've been very lucky I started off on my own it was difficult because I quit a government job of 22 years to do this mm -hmm. and of course I didn't have any benefits no nothing no security blanket but you know people need messages and when I'm able to connect for them in the way that I do I think that's how I got popular but to be honest what happened with me Mark is that I met a few people social media is amazing yeah. for meeting people and I connected with a really great woman who introduced me to so many celebrities and I was very very well known in the US after only a year of doing really? business here amongst the celebrities for doing readings and mm -hmm. I think uh, you know I was a hidden gem for them really because they wouldn't tell each other about me but then one would find out and say wait a minute here she read for you how come yeah. you didn't tell me about her but it's like they call me the Shania Twain of mediums and really yeah they do wow because you're because you're a sort of a northern Ontario girl because right? Shania is just I guess so outgoing yeah. and so you know bubbly and everything else yeah. and I guess because she's from this area I guess people have kind of dubbed me that you know the Shania Twain of mediums but I mean I love Shania I think she's so beautiful yeah. um, but you know I've been very very lucky and I had some great people help me along the way with my career as well mm -hmm. I had a second cousin of mine Gil Grand okay. uh, who is a country music award uh, winner and very very well known in the country music industry yeah. who really helped me uh, you know get to know the country music people and I read for so many great people like Bucky Barrett you know Roy Orbison's player and wow. yeah and 
you know, even Hall of Famers out there, it's been amazing. And I want to hear about some of those people, like some of the names that people would recognize. Oh, okay. Um, but I'd like to kind of, maybe we can just sort of go back, like, and, and kind of, um, maybe tell me about how you sort of realized that you you uh, that you had this sort of ability to connect with people yeah. and I, I'd like to know about that but there's uh, I, I'm also curious about how you know you sort of take that realization and transform it into real like a thriving business because really that's I mean you're an entrepreneur right like it's, it's, you know leaving aside what it is exactly that you do yes you're a businesswoman like you you know you yes, have a business because it's a one-man show really yeah. when you when you talk about this kind of thing and now I do have more people involved in my business because mm. I'm growing at a rapid rate so I have to keep up with the times but I've been like this most of my life I had a near-death accident when I was close to four okay. and I don't think that's why I'm like this my mother was actually a practicing psychic okay um, in Sudbury yeah. like are you born and raised here yeah I was yeah. born and raised here I'm from okay. the valley actually okay. and my mother was known as psychic Beatrice okay. and the kids used to call me psycho Betty <laughs> so <laughs> sorry nice. I had to throw that in there <laughs> but kids can be cruel but yeah, I grew up like this yeah. and I was actually the identical at home <laughs> in the 1960s and 70s you know and uh, I used to tell my mother who was calling and so they'd yeah, yeah we had party lines back then you know but I grew up like this and I had to hide it to be very honest kids can be cruel mm -hmm. and for a long time I didn't do anything with it and then in high school I started again okay. and I had to actually learn how to read tarot cards because I was faking my way through it yeah. giving people messages and going geez those cards are so good but I didn't know what the heck I was doing with them you know <laughs> so someone figured that out really fast and I ended up taking some courses yeah. so I'd read cards but I wouldn't read them the way I, I was taught I, I read with with what was here yeah. and uh, so this went on for a while um, you know all of my friends and family knew I was like this so everybody would naturally come to me for readings but were you always a believer in sort of paranormal stuff and psychic oh, yes. power? like you were like it you didn't have like a kind of an awakening or anything oh, like no, you no, were no. always sort of a, no. a believer I was immersed in this my okay. mother talked about UFOs that she oh, yeah. saw when she was younger out in Noelleville when she was a girl yeah. how it had burnt a great big circle in the field that was big like a football field like it's crazy and uh, she talked about like aliens and people from other worlds different consciousness how to connect with the dead through dreams oh, your mother sounds like quite a woman we talked about ghosts ghost hunts even back in the 70s and 80s my whole yeah. family did you know and my family's all kind of immersed in this somehow okay. so it's a very very strong uh, you know strong stuff that we yeah. do with that yeah. so it's sort of a natural progression for you to kind of Except that that you had some kind of uh, what you see as a sort yeah. of a, an ability. Yes. Well, I. What would you call it? What do you call it? Like, what do you say? You, what do people, you say you have? I don't know. Like, people dubbed me as a psychic medium. Yeah. So I had to look those things up, really, because what the heck is that? Like, yeah. and and I I'm gonna be honest. I, I don't like those terms. I don't like being called a medium mm -hmm. because I, I I think I'm a small. <laughs> I told you we'd have fun. No. <laughs> but no, I, I never liked that. I always believed that I connected with a consciousness that's not, um, you know, that you're not aware of. So, mm -hmm. like, for instance, like when we're sleeping, you know, it's a totally different consciousness. Well, I can connect to that, let's say, dream world. Yeah. And so, I don't know what to call myself, a sensitive, a medium, an intuitive, a psychic, but I've got all the senses. So when you're looking at clair senses, mm -hmm. um, I have clairsentience, just a knowing of things, okay. clairvoyance, which is psychic, right? right? Ability to see past or present or future. Mm -hmm. um, clairgustance, tasting, clairtangency. Wow. Okay. I can go on and on, a clear audience, the ability of hearing, you know, that kind of thing right. within. And so I have all of these abilities. So I use all of that and I put it together and I come up with a story and it usually makes sense and they're usually pretty clear so is that something you have to you have to sort of practice like yes. you know it's like are they like muscles in your in your mind are they that you need to sort of you know uh, hone well I think what it is Mark is that people that do my job need the experience of being hurt yeah. They need the experience of having to go through difficult life lessons mm -hmm. in order to be able to take what it is that we're feeling and translating it into a positive or kind of message that's not going to scare the living light daylights out of someone yeah. because I'm telling you people really hang on to what it is that we say mm -hmm. and you have to be really careful I mean I've had mediums uh, come to see me and say oh well I told so-and-so her mother was gonna die in two weeks and I'm going 
Why would you say that? I was going to ask that. Why, Why would you say that? That, yeah. that drives me nuts, to be very honest. I have so many people that come to see me and ask me if they have spells against them, if I'm going to make them buy $500 worth of candles or make them buy some kind of potion for two, $300 mm -hmm. to get rid of whatever spell they have. And I'm thinking, who the heck put that crap in your head? Excuse my French. <laughs> But like really, who the yeah. hell does that to people? Yeah. And so I'm so proud of the way I do my, my readings because I know that I do it with what I'm sensing, feeling, smelling. If I don't sense anything around someone, mm -hmm. I tell them, I'm very honest. And people come to you, it's sort of, I mean, because you, you know, you, you of what you do, mm -hmm. people who come to you are, are I imagine, pretty, uh, some of them are very vulnerable, they you know, are. they come to you at sort of vulnerable points in their lives. They so, are. well, you're, you know, you're almost serving a, uh, you almost have sort of a therapeutic role in a way. Do you, do you see it the same way? I do, but the thing is, I have to be careful again because, you know, I can't give medical advice, I can't give yeah. financial or psychological advice. I, I would think not. And I tell people that straight up, or mm. I have like a, a disclaimer on my site, yeah. not to protect me legally, but to protect people yeah. because they really need to know what they're getting into when they're getting into a reading. I don't tell people how I read. I leave that to me when I when they come to see me. I'll explain all that, but they need to know that I don't give this medical advice or, you know, people say, is my husband cheating on me? Let's say. <laughs> Oh my God! I'm not, I'm not a, you know, I can't read You're not my a private detective. And I'm, I don't do those things, and yeah. I don't want husband coming and knock at my door, really. Ding ding! What do you tell my wife? But at the end of the day, no, I, I wouldn't do that anyways. I, I think that's tacky. I, I don't know. I couldn't give that kind of information unless someone is, you know, been hurt that way, and I can really sense what they've gone through. I can really validate mm -hmm. what they've gone through to help them move forward, you right. know. But there is, you know, I'm going to tell you, some of the hospitals here refer me actually the really? cancer center some doctors do okay. and some psychiatrists actually really? refer their clients to me yes I've had a lot of referrals because they feel that I may be able to help them in a spiritual sense where they can't help them and believe me when I could tell people what they're eating for the last three days what mm -hmm. they said to their next door neighbor and how they were upset with the guy from Sears that didn't drop off their package at 3 30 p.m. they know their spirits around trust yeah. me yeah so the thing is it's it's interesting interesting the way I connect I try to make it humorous a little bit but at the same time you know when to be serious mm -hmm. but I'm telling you when there's spirits around I know it yeah. <laughs> I know and it you, and you have like this uh, you I assume that you always had this kind of sort of enthusiastic outgoing charismatic kind of yes. bubbly personality I've always been a happy kid yeah and that I mean that hell that certainly is part of, of of what it is that you do right I mean people are attracted and want to talk to yeah. you they do, but you have to be a little bit funny and crazy in this type of business as well because yeah. it's a lot to swallow. I mean, I've had people come to see me arms like this, you know, and then like leaving going, oh my God, I'm so sorry. It was even like rude to you. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It's okay. You know, yeah. I try not to take things personal. You can't really. Yeah. And if people are skeptical, that's okay too. I'm the biggest skeptics around. Trust me. I've had a lot of readings. Yeah. And there's only a few people that can wow. act for me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yes. Go back. Just, I want to take a step back there. <laughs> the I've had a lot of readings. Yes, I have. So do, when you, when you sit down to have a reading, yes. do they know who you are? Sometimes or do you go in there do. and you're like a secret shopper and you're like, yeah. I'm just going to test this person out and see what they're all about. <laughs> you know, I've done a couple different ways. I've yeah. traded readings with, with readers. I had sure. a lady in California, actually, that was charging $700 for an hour. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is a nice chunk of change. Yeah. And she told me that aliens watch me while I sleep at night. Wow. Yeah. So when it came time to my reading, I said, first of all, let me tell you what I'm sensing. So I told her everything. I gave her the time of her father's death yeah. and different things. And not to say that she, you know, I mean, I've I've had beautiful readings too, but this one really sucked, I gotta tell you. <laughs> And uh, so then after I told her, I said, how do you charge $700 for like feeding so much crap to people? She yeah. just went, what are you telling me? You're being disrespectful. I said, I'm being honest with you. Yeah. You asked me why you weren't getting any readings. That's why. Yeah. I said, first of all, you're charging too much. Second of all, I said, you can't baffle anyone with that BS. Nobody's going to understand that. Yeah. And I said, you, you know, I said, I was looking for a mediumship reading, not aliens that visit me at night, you know. <laughs> So, I mean, I could tell you stories, but then I've had some mediums tell me that my mother wanted to thank me for pushing the piano to the door and playing a song 10 minutes before she died. That's crazy. At the Pioneer wow. Manor, yeah. they have that great baby grand piano. Okay. I took that thing and I pushed it right to Cranberry Lane. Nobody was going to stop me. Yeah. 
10 minutes before my mother passed, they were aspirating her and they asked me to leave the room. So I thought I'd play your song because I was feeling that she was going soon. Yeah. And she came through to tell me that. Nice. That's amazing. That must feel uh, sort of validating for you. It felt amazing because yeah. I couldn't feel my own mother. Can you imagine? For mm -hmm. eight months after she passed, I couldn't feel her. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, this is crazy. I'm a medium or whatever they call me. I should be able to feel my own mother. I couldn't. Wow. Yeah, so it took someone else. But you know what? I think it's because we do it for so many people. It's it's hard to do it for ourselves sometimes, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. How, how do you deal with that? Because I mean, like I, I people like like I said, people come to you at, at very vulnerable times in yeah. their lives. Yeah. It that's a lot of sort of baggage to take on, and and how do you, you know, how do you sort of. Um, because you have to be sensitive with them, I assume. I mean, you that's do. You have to watch, but you also have to be very honest. If I have a mother that's coming to me and a son that's committed suicide, yeah. I have to be very honest about those things. Yeah. And and you know, because the mother will say, "No, it wasn't a suicide," and you don't, you know, it's a suicide. Right. You have to say, "Look, you're going to have to accept this," and and this is the what I'm seeing. But you're lying to me. I'm not lying to you. This is what I'm sensing. I'm being very honest with you. And and sometimes you have to just tell. Them, just I'm putting my car on the table here this is what I'm sensing mm -hmm. and a lot of people you know will come back to me later and say yes I mean I had one recently I had a funeral director ask me to do a reading for a family wouldn't give me any information just told me show up at my my office yeah. okay and I was coming in um, from out of town I was on the road actually and I was exhausted I just finished doing six shows back to back mm -hmm. but I went and I met with this couple and like right away it's like oh my god your daughter died at 3 a.m. It's like, how do you know that? I said, you went to wake her up. Like, why would you wake her up at 3 a.m.? Mm -hmm. She had a school project, you know, and goes on and on and on like this. So there's like different things, but it's interesting. They'll come through really quickly, but you have to really, you have to be very honest with people when you're reading them and you have to say it the way it is. Yeah. Because the minute you sugarcoat something or you pretend, you know, you don't say anything or whatever, They'll just think you're full of crap, excuse me, but it's, it's true, yeah. they, they will. They'll just think that you're not being honest with them or whatever. Do you ever get a negative reaction? For like, Has anyone yeah. ever been angry with you? Oh yes, yeah. I've had people throw stuff at me. Really? I had one lady, um, her father, I kept on channeling her father, he had, uh, what I kept on seeing inside my head was like, you know that gold nugget jewelry? Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that well, stuff. Yeah. I don't like that stuff. <laughs> But anyways, great big bracelet, big watch, big ring, big necklace. And I said, I've got this man that's coming through, but he's wearing all gold nugget jewelry. She goes, oh my God, that's my father. Tell him to leave. Yeah. Well, that's not the way it works. I mean, I, I, you can't just call in any spirit you want. It's not mm -hmm. the way it works. They come to you, right? But I, I, I told her, I said, I'm sorry, this is what I have. And yeah. she, she got really angry with me and threw things at me and left. Wow. Yeah, but that's okay. You yeah. know what? I, and then my husband says, are you okay? I said, it wasn't hurt. It was just like a box of Kleenex. Yeah. But life goes on, you know, you just got to accept it. I had another one that was very angry for for telling her about the way her mother passed away. Okay. And then when they got the autopsy, it was confirmed. So she called me to apologize, but I got an earful for that too, before the fact. But you know what, it's okay. People are hurting yeah. and people are in pain and I can't get angry with someone that's gonna lash out because sometimes we grieve that way. And yeah. I've had a lot of grief in my family, a lot of death, so I understand grief. It's a common thing that we all go through. We all, I mean, go through. Yeah, we all lose people. And we all grieve differently. Some mm -hmm. people I see uh, 10 years after their husband died and, and they're crying just as if it happened yesterday. Yeah. And you can't, you can't measure that at all, you know? So you just gotta be very honest. Some people actually have gone to see other people that have gotten like really negative messages mm -hmm. and I'm having to undo all of that as well and saying, no, that's not the way it works. What, what role do you see you that you're, like do you see yourself as playing, because you, you you're involved in these people's lives, however brief, it's yes. a you're making a sort of significant you do. role. You do, you make a big difference sometimes in their lives. I've had people- And you can do damage if you're not. And so. you can, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I've, I've had to, I went to this one area out of town where they have very limited uh, psych, you know, psychic and medium type of services. So when I get there, it's like I'm very, very busy, but you have to see the stories I hear. And it's like I shake my head because I'm thinking, oh my God. Like, I mean, I believe in the paranormal. I believe in demons. I believe in aliens. I believe in all of this stuff because we're not alone, trust me. 
but some of this stuff I mean you know I mean if, if you don't drink this $400 potion you're gonna die within three months of stomach cancer oh please yeah. that's probably what's gonna give you cancer <laughs> you know? don't drink it yeah. but that's what I mean like people really take advantage and it, it it drives me nuts and I'm the first one and I get very angry about it and I shouldn't but I'm the very first one and I'll say that is not right and I'll tell the client that is not right you have been had mm -hmm. that is not you know something that a light worker would do to anybody mm. is to a instill light worker light worker okay. we're considered light workers okay. yeah because we try to enlighten people light is beautiful it's it's positive you know you don't tell people terrible things you want to help them you want to help them heal you don't want to hinder their healing yeah. you know? have you done like uh, because you're it is a kind of a therapy that you're sort of doing with people do you have you ever taken like courses in, in you know th therapy with like doing talk therapy anything like no. that no no no, the only courses so I took... Instinctual, instinctive, you find, what you do? I think I just speak from the heart, and I think people understand that. And if I tell them I can't understand what you're going through, because sometimes I can't, but they, 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 they appreciate that because yeah. you're being really honest with them, or you can't even, like, some stuff I've seen, like, you know, accidents where four or five people from the same family are killed. I mean... I can't even imagine the grief there. That's We've so lost a few in a day. I had a cousin of mine who lost two children in a day uh, in an accident. But I mean, I, you know, her life totally changed that yeah, day. Yeah. You know, so what do you tell people like that? All you could do is comfort them. You, all you can do is give them validations that their loved ones are around somehow. Yeah. You know, yeah. Have you ever like how did now? I want to. I'm curious about because as an entrepreneur, as, as a businesswoman, I mean, it, there's a considerable amount of risk involved in leaving you know sort of a quote you know sort of a corporate job or something that gives you a kind of a steady paycheck yes. to branch out on your own yes. and to try and build your own business like there's a considerable amount of financial risk to your family and that sort of thing in doing that like was there a what sort of convinced you I guess that you that you know I want to make a, I want to make a go with this I want to see if I can do this you know professionally it's an interesting question I was having difficulties with an employer I, just difficulties with my job and I had been medically accommodated into another position which really didn't work out for me mm -hmm. but I think it's what really I needed to experience to know that it wasn't that job wasn't for me. The people were wonderful. I loved everybody I worked with, sure. but the job was boring and it just didn't give me really what I wanted. And what really motivated me to quit my job was my mother's death. I quit okay. two and a half, three weeks after she died, which is not a good thing. I always tell people, don't make any decisions. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So I didn't follow my own advice, but I did. I quit my job and um, I said to my husband, what do I do now? He goes, you do your mediumship. And I said, I can't do that. He goes, yeah. He says, you're amazing. And he says, you know, people are just going to love you. And I said, well, if I'm going to do this and come out of my closet, my spiritual closet, because I was scared yeah. really to go out to Joe Public and do this. I said, I'm going to do it on a very large scale. He goes, what do you mean? And I said, well, I'm just going to do it worldwide. And he goes, really? Just do it. Yeah. I said, okay. He says, this is what you're good at. So what was the first thing you did then? Like once you decided that, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to strike out on my own. I'm going to yeah. build my own business. What was the very first, like, did you start with private readings? Did you start with big public readings? Like yeah. how did you start? I started with private readings and I okay. went to see Charmaine Kennedy at the Tree of Life. Okay. And she's a beautiful girl. I just love her. She really helped me get started. And actually I had gone to see her before I quit because I was thinking of leaving. Mm -hmm. And she says, you know, do you want to try this? This part time, so I was reading for very minimal. I was just doing it here and there, but I really loved it. But when I decided to go full bore, she took me in, she took me under her wing, she really helped me get started. She introduced me to the community, mm -hmm. spiritual community, because of course she does Reiki and different things. And I absolutely loved her. And then I stayed there for a little while, but then I was book solid for two years. I had opened up my booking calendar, and in three weeks, my calendar booked solid for two years. Wow, yeah. that is a nice bit of value that you made the right decision? I did and it was like I think only six or eight months after I had started full-time so I actually had to take my calendar offline for two years so a lot of people thought I had left Sudbury which I didn't it was just I mean you don't have a life when you're booked solid for two years yeah. and I had predicted a, a heart attack for my sister and when she had it the day I predicted it because my father came to see me it's another it's another story trust sure. me Mark what had happened was um, you know it was just 
you know, basically it was just what I needed to, to, to do in order to get where I was going. But there's two spirits here. I'm so sorry. They're driving me absolutely crazy. And a lot of times I'm going to get disrupted when okay. I'm talking like this. Sure. And it's just a really natural thing. I've interviewed multiple people at the same time before, so yeah, that'll be that's fine. Good. <laughs> Good. Lisa, Lisa, you don't think I have a dual personality. I'm, okay, I'm good to go. <laughs> but no, seriously, um, but that's kind of what, what made me decide to get out there was, was just all of these people. When I saw I was booked for two years, I knew that they really needed somebody. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, geez, I must be doing something right. You Did know? that blow you away that you had that level of, like, no, that's a, that's a fast turner. Like, you know, business owners would be, it was you know, would be, would be, you know, falling all over themselves to have that much success so yeah. quickly. It was crazy. So then I left there, but I had trouble finding places to read. I needed to be on my own where it was quiet, okay. not as much traffic. And um, I had gotten a place. I stayed there for a few years and I moved around my poor clients. I'm telling you, but I couldn't find a place that was permanent. So we decided two years ago to buy a house and now I'm doing them out of my home office. Okay. So which is nice because I can control that. I'm too busy actually to go to an office and to work there. That's yeah. how crazy it is. But you know, six months into my business, I started reading as well on the internet. Yeah. And I started That's this- It's been huge for you, I think. Hey? It was. You know what started with me, Mark, is I, I started doing these email readings and there was a lady in England that didn't understand my very French way of saying a certain thing. Sure. And what I was trying to tell her was that I could see a woman putting her palm onto her chin and doing this. Okay. So I didn't know how to write that down. Yeah. So she wrote to me and says, Jay, you're you know, yeah. beautiful reading, but I don't understand this part. So I asked her, do you have Skype? Yeah. She says, yes, I do. I said, great, can you meet me on Skype in an hour? She says, yes, wow, I do. Wow, that must have been like, bling, light goes off. Yeah, so I went on to Skype and I said, I just need to ask you this. She goes, what? I said, what's this? She goes, oh my God, that's me, mom. Yeah. I said, your mom? She goes, my mother, when she had whiskers, she had very severe dementia. Yeah. When she wanted to be shaved, she would run after me doing this. And she says, when I shave her, she'd be fine. Yeah. And I said, are you serious? Like, because I'd never heard of that, you know? She goes, that's what she Because you don't did. have tin whiskers, well, so. I don't, not yet, anyways. <laughs> But, you know, I thought, okay, you know what, I have to do videos, I have to do videos. Yeah. But I could not find a program that would take me for more than two minutes. Okay. And I could talk, Mark, you yeah. know that already. Yeah, so I, I thought, yes, of course. But I thought to myself, you know, this is crazy. So I met this guy on the internet okay. who was best friends with Alan Alda from MASH. Yeah, sure. And he was an actor from Germany, John, his name yeah. was an amazing guy. And he says, Jay, he says, I developed a an email system for John by video, uh, for Alan Alda. Mm -hmm. And he says, he uses this, but he says, I'd be willing to sell you, you know, for you to use it every mm -hmm. year. So that I started doing video reading. So I had yeah. a business called videopsychicadvice.com. I still yeah. have it. Yeah. And I started doing video readings. So someone would send me questions or they'd just say, I want a reading. I would sit in front of a camera, do a 15 minute reading or a half hour reading. Yeah. And I would email it to them. Oh, okay. Yep. So that started, so people show their videos, right? Yeah. But that's how you get known. And so it just started from there. So I did that for a long time. I had okay. to discontinue them because I had too much demand. Wow. I can't do 200 readings in a week. And, you're, and you tour too. Like when did you, when yes. did the touring start? Um, I and started, you know. live shows. Because I've seen, like I went to a show with my wife a few couple of years ago at the Steelworkers Hall and it was packed. Yeah, it's about 550 people yeah. at that show two years ago. And I have another show actually coming at the end of October. So I'm kind of excited. Yes. But I'm really, really excited about it. I, I love doing it around Halloween. So it's lots of fun but coming back to those videos that's yeah. how I started I had celebrities ask me to do videos for them which I did what kind of marketing did you do like how do you I didn't do anything I just okay. I just on Facebook and then I just started posting some of the readings I did okay. and then I started getting really popular and then after sort of a word of mouth sort of yeah thing. And then after that, I started reading, uh, I became really good friends with this lady named Lorelei McBroom, who's, um, at the time, she was on tour with Rod Stewart. Okay. And she had sang with Pink Floyd for many years, and she was with the Rolling Stones for two years. She's okay. an amazing artist. But she introduced me to so many people. Oh my, I can't even, like, 
everybody in the rock world, you know, and so I know so many people there now, but she's been amazing and very instrumental in helping, but I had suggested that she That's started... That's marketing. It is, but you know what she did? I told her, I said, where'd you get your jewelry? She goes, I make it. I go, what do you mean you make that? That's yeah. freaking hot. She goes, I do. She says, Jay, I was just in Tibet, and she says, I was with Rod Stewart, and she goes, we had two days off. I went shopping for beads, and the necklace that you like mm -hmm. is, is beads from Tibet. I said, can I buy one? Yeah. She goes, really? I said, you need to make these she goes really so she started so then I started marketing um, you know with her and so I would wear her jewelry and then I would advertise a free reading and then she would market you know me wearing like modeling her jewelry sort on her website kind of thing. Yeah, yeah kind yeah. of we'd help yeah. each other out you know and then she was referring me for readings and I thought well yes. it's not a bad deal really and then she was providing me with oh she has beautiful jewelry I just love her it's a big step though to go from sort of those one-on-one -on -one readings to like all of a sudden you're in a an, you know an, an, an arena or some sort of uh, you know hall with hundreds and hundreds of people all staring at you yeah I love and it you have to put on a sh performance I love it I mean, though there's a, like a, there has to be like a performance element right to what you there do. is you know I you used know to because I mean? you have to be engaging you want yeah. people to you know I mean, people aren't going there to watch someone stand still and be boring yeah. like they want they want personality right yeah and you, you I mean you obviously have personality you like you in droves it's just pouring out of you yeah but, I, I mean, do there's a performance element right to being to being you up know, on I, there and having and drawing their attention and keeping their attention you can't be afraid I yeah. think that's what it is you know Gil used to say Jay how'd you do it right this With is this, your cousin the country. yes yeah. he had a nice Nashville thing so I have sure. to kind of imitate him yeah. but he says you know I can go to sleep at night and I can rehearse my set inside of my head I know exactly what song I'm doing when mm -hmm. I'm doing it who's doing it with me because yeah. but you go out there with nothing. I said, yeah, I do. Yeah. He goes, that's crazy. I said, I love it though. Because the thing is, those that need the messages most, trust me, the spirits are the loudest. But if I'm walking beside someone and all of a sudden I feel something, I'll back mm -hmm. up and I start picking on them, you know. Are you but, nervous before you go out there? Uh, I get excited, you know. Okay. I, I get, ha I, I can't wait to go out, really. Yeah. I know it's crazy. I used to sing. Okay. And so I love to like sing. Band, yeah. yeah, I was yeah. in a band for a couple of years. So I think that kind of got me ready for like stage stuff. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And I use music in my, uh, you know, a lot in my shows. Okay. I use a lot of humor because you have to, you have to, you have to have that roller coaster. You have to be laughing one minute and like bawling your eyes out the next. But it's just the way we do it. I love it. That's I love it. I kind of found when I went with my wife to the show is that I found you, uh, you're incredibly personal, but you also, you have this kind of quality about you where you kind of feel like even if you're in a room full of people that you're kind of, you're kind of alone with you in a way. Like yes. you, you're very down to earth. You swear. Like yes, you're, you're I just, do. You're very like, you're just like, <laughs> a, you know, an average person who just happens to be holding a microphone and, yes. and wandering around the room. Yes. That's, do you think that's an element sort of of your success that people can relate to? I think to so. You? you have to be relatable. Yeah. You know, if you go see a meeting, medium, and, and like I've seen a couple performances, I've seen some wonderful ones too. Yeah. So I've been so, so lucky. But I've seen, uh, you know, smaller groups where the medium is just very quiet, you know, maybe trying to be too prim and proper, you can't. Yeah. You're dealing with, if I'm dealing with a woman, I remember I doing a show in Gravenhurst at the Opera House, mm -hmm. and I said to her, first thing I said was, why the hell did you tell me my goddamn sideburns were crooked? And she goes, oh my God, that's my husband. And I said, <laughs> Why the sideburns? Yeah. I see these great big, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like these huge, yeah. yeah. And she goes, oh my God, she says, my husband's been dead for 30 years, Jay. Yeah. She says, but he had a round face. And she goes, he used to make these big sideburns to try to make his face look smaller. But she says, he never did them straight. <laughs> so she says, if he did them crooked, she goes, I tell him, but then they get shorter and shorter and then get mad and he'd shave them all off. And then it was hearing about a sideburn, she says, for about three weeks until they were all back in perfectly. So she says, that's my husband. But she knew right away because he would swear at her, you know, and he would. So the thing is, when I come across that way, she knew. She knew that was him. Yeah. So the thing is, you have to keep it real. People can relate to... You know, if the person swears or if they have a, a certain nickname that they call people, because sometimes you'll hear those nicknames. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> you get all kinds, trust me. And then people will joke back with you in the audience. It's amazing. When did you start the touring? Because like, you started, you like, you you don't just tour in Canada or, or Northern Ontario. No. You go into the States, you go, yeah, well, you, you go far afield. Well, I, I'm a little bit all over the place. Mostly I've been doing shows around here when it's winter time because I don't like to travel too much. But starting February, I'm going to 
to be going to the States again. I have uh, signed a, a contract with a company called Inspiration Nation, okay. who has, I know, I love, I love Kelly. She's amazing. I have a great agent. But uh, they have all bestsellers and, and all New York bestsellers on their you know, on their roster, mm -hmm. but I'm going to be, um, you know, on the same roster as James Van Prague, Lisa Williams, and Monica the Medium, so I'm very, very honored to be there, but unlike them, I don't have t TV shows and books, but I did place top percentile out of, I think, over 750 readings worldwide, so they snagged who, me. Who ranks those? Um, they have their own system, trust okay. me. They have been around mediums, and I mean, they're dealing with world-famous mediums all the time, yeah. and uh, so they know somewhat, th what they'll do is, um, I was tested so they had four people call me from all over the world without any names no phone numbers showing nothing and I had to be available to read them for an hour Wow! so I did that and I I nailed all four of them and they couldn't believe Almost it like an audition it, it is like an audition and uh, it, it, it can be kind of intimidating I mean I've done big interviews like that for networks as well because you've got to read for the producers to because okay. You don't know who they are sometimes. Like for TV appearances? Yeah, okay. TV, well not necessarily TV appearances, like for shows, Netflix, that kind of thing, you know. Oh, tell me more, tell me about that. A couple of years ago, I short about a year and a half ago, I shortlisted for two Netflix series and oh, I couldn't okay. really talk about it. Okay. But the thing is, it just really never went through, I guess. Um, as they say, they change their minds like they change their underwear in that <laughs> business, like you know, which is every day. Yeah. But the thing is, it was a really exciting experience because I was interviewed four times, or yeah, four times. And the thing is, it makes you nervous because every time you're interviewed, you know you've shortlisted, shortlisted, shortlisted even more. And so they had shortlisted a medium, I believe, from Scotland, one, me from Canada, I was the only one, and then I believe two from the US. And there was supposed to be this TV show that was done, um, I don't really know the concept of the show, but okay. it was heartbreaking when it didn't go through because my heart was really set on doing that. But you know what, it was a fantastic experience. And I've had a lot of offers since, but nothing that really appeals to me. So yeah. I'm thinking of doing my own thing. And in fact, I'm working with, uh, with a wonderful lady in the States by the name of Tammy uh, McCrary who's you know Shaka Khan the singer yeah yeah of course that's her sister okay. <laughs> she managed Shaka for oh, a number of a, years oh my god that's like a blast from the 80s I, I know no one awesome. has said the name Shaka Khan to me in yeah. probably 20 years I know some people out there probably won't even know who no, the heck that not. is but um, Tammy and I worked together once in a while and she had ideas for TV shows too so we're still kind of you know kicking some stuff around and I had also shortlisted for a very large syndicated radio show because I had I was on XM Radio for a little while oh, yeah. with Todd Shapiro, Holy cow. which is the uh, you know the Howard Stern of Canada. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was amazing. So um, I kind of freaked them out a little bit. Are you blown away by how this kind of snowballed? Right? No. I mean, you've got the you've they got the you know went from the, so. the readings, you went you know net, possibly Netflix shows. You've got a yeah. deal to, to you know you deal with a speaking thing in the states. Yeah. I mean, you're doing these weekly live Facebook chats. Yeah. Like and I have a contract with Pathios, which is one of the largest spiritual networks in the world. And yes. I'm their second vlogger, their first vlogger, which I've been uh, trending with, is Mark Nepos. And okay. Mark Nepos is uh, Oprah's spiritual guru. Okay. So it's kind of nice to be neck and neck with him, but I'm still working on it. It's pretty, like, do you ever blow, do you ever just sit back and go, I can't believe that I, you know, I just took this, you know, girl from Sudbury, and all of a sudden, no. I, you know, I'm getting a, you know, you, you've got a, sir, you've got a celebrity status. Well, I don't know if I, 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 you know, I don't let that get to my head. I always try to think that I'm like everybody else, but and I am like everybody else. But the thing is, I don't look at it as having a celebrity status. It's just I have a job to do, and that's to affect the world. And I'm hoping that there's a lot of people out there listening because I'm raring to go. Yeah. But I'm a hardworking person. I put a lot of heart into it, and. Yeah. And, um, you know, in the middle of website designs, I have a membership site where I have, well, I had over 3,000 people, but we just built a new one. So now they're starting to, you know, come over to the new site. But um, I do soulmate chats there twice a month okay. as well. Yeah. And uh, we're all on video, all of us, which is kind of interesting. And I yeah. do readings off of that network, so it's great. The I computer has been, it's been like, the internet has really been a... It's been is awesome. it, Do you think it's, that, like, a lot of your success comes from Absolutely. that? Absolutely. 
I tell people, you know, oh, I don't want to go on social media. Are you crazy? Yeah. I mean, I would have never been discovered by anybody had I not been on social media. Yeah. And the thing is, I used to do these free readings on, you know, these chats. And um, people come from all over the place. I don't know who's going to be on my chat. Sometimes I'll have four or five hundred people on there. And so I'll just pick a person, put them on webcam, tell them to be nice. <laughs> and, you know, no swearing or anything because, like, you never know who's on the Internet. Yeah, of course. And I'll do readings for them and I put them on the spot and it's been amazing so are books anything like that in the works for, yeah actually uh, for I'm working I brought some along but I'm working on some tarot cards which is great I'm okay. working with Lori Lohenberg and Lori's just a great girl I met her I did a radio show with her about four years ago mm -hmm. and is she a um, local woman? no she's okay. from Florida she's okay. always on Dr. Oz Katie Couric the okay. Steve Harvey show she's appeared on 3800 networks and shows and programs she's amazing and right now she's in the middle of a deal for her own TV show in the States but she's had her own TV shows as well yeah. a dream expert but she's a beautiful artist and I had met her I did a show of dreaming of the dead mm -hmm. and um, she had me as her guest on there and we quickly became friends and when I saw the art on her website I said who drew that she goes I do I'm there oh my god I love your art yeah. you've got to draw my card she goes I'd love to so we started on that project last year. She's so busy. She's always in New York or on TV everywhere. So it's hard to get a hold of her, but I love her. And uh, so I've been working on that with her. I'm also working on a book called My Spirit Guide. Okay. And it's the 100 most, question, most asked questions of a psychic medium. And I'm going to put it all together and put it out there, but it's amazing. And, uh, and then, of course, I have my vlog that I absolutely love doing. And it's been a lot of fun. When, where's the downtime for for There's Jay Lane doesn't sound like There's you have any none. time for yourself. Like, you know what? I when you're when you're not on a, doing an appearance or writing a book, you've got you know people in your head to you know, yeah. trying to pull your attention in three different directions. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, my day starts at usually about five or six in the morning, sometimes yeah. four, and then I start my readings around ten because I have to eat and I can't eat right early in the morning. And then I do readings Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But Monday night I do my soulmate chats. Tuesday night I do my Facebook chats. Yeah. Wednesday night. I usually have conference calls with California, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then Thursday, Friday nights, I do events. And then I do corporate events on weekends. <sighs> and then I do my own tours. And then people buy shows, of course. Like I'm doing one in Cap this casing. I'm going to be at the Deerhurst. Okay. There's a lot of things. I used to live on. in Cap. So where are, oh, you yeah? doing, where are you doing it in Cap? It's a Chante Lazia. Oh, sure, yeah, sure, yeah. Sure. I know. I think it's at the school, actually. Oh, okay. Yes, it's going to be at the school. Because it was supposed to be at the Chante Lazia. But I think that date wasn't available. So it's okay. going to be on November 23rd. I'm excited about oh, cool. it. Cool. I'll tell my friends up there to look. Yeah, good. yeah. Well, they're looking yeah, to fill the place, which is about 200 people. Yeah. So I'm kind of excited about it. It's going to be a smaller show, but it's going to be fun. Yeah. And then Deerhurst is a healing retreat with Nancy Pentalilamir and Dr. Luke Lemire out of Timmins. Okay. And they're very well known internationally. He's a well known writer in the health industry in California. Okay. He's won all kinds of awards, and she's also well known as a hypnotherapist and natural healer. And they're doing a, a healing retreat in Deerhurst, so I'm kind of excited to be part of that. Now, as a businesswoman, do you do this all on your own? Like, do yes. you have do you have employees that kind of help you with oh, bookings yes. and all that sort of stuff? No. Or my booking calendar is online, so I found a really great one, but I actually programmed it all by myself. But I have Patty, who's my techie. I have uh, Launchpad, mm -hmm. which is my social media people. They're amazing, so they're helping me That's with Cliff Skeleter. Yeah, yeah, Cliff's amazing and his staff. Um, and then I have uh, well, Patty's my right hand woman. Really to do with my websites and stuff like that. Um, I also have a manager, which is, uh, Tammy works for me on and off, like depending on the projects we do. But in Canada, I do it all myself with um, an assistant of mine who's Susie. She's an amazing girl. And then I have my agent out in California. So yeah, and then I have two other staff that help answer emails because I get between four to 700 emails a week on Facebook. Wow. Yeah. You are a crazy busy woman. I am. <laughs> I am. I get a couple thousand emails every month just uh, just to ask for free readings, actually. So there's a demand out there. So what's next for Jay Lane? Then? Oh my God, there's so much. I want to do television in the worst way and I want to do radio. I just okay. want to get out there on a larger scale. And so I'm just going to be out there. I'm going to be in the States starting uh, February. I'm going to be doing shows uh, most likely in California, um, Phoenix, Arizona, you know, those states. I'm going to be starting there. 
been coming back, but I'm not moving from Sunbury. Okay, you're gonna I'm, you're gonna be a Nickel City girl. I uh, am. Yeah. I am. My heart's here, and my mortgage is good for another two years, <laughs> so I have to stay. But um, you know, I do have my permit to work in the U.S. for three years, so I was very lucky to get that. And so I'm just gonna be going back and forth. I'm wow. kind of excited about it and see what happens from there. But I'm writing books, and I'm hoping to be on TV. Where can people see you next? I'm going to be actually the 21st in Deerhurst uh, for a healing retreat. So if anyone wants information, they could certainly, you know, go to Facebook actually at my page at, at facebook.com medium forward slash medium J Lane. Yep. I'm going to be at the Steelworkers Hall on October 27th between 7 and 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. And that's a night of spirit with me, of course. And I'm super pumped because I love my Sudbury peeps, you know. <laughs> and um, after that, I'm going to be doing a few private events, but the next big one is going to be out in Cafes Casing on okay. November 23rd. I'm also going to be doing a fundraiser in February for the Ronald McDonald House. Local like in Sunday? Absolutely okay. and I'm excited to be working with the Crusoe Club. We've secured that venue and all proceeds are going to Ronald McDonald House. So I'm hoping it's going to be black tie, beautiful dinner event and yep. John out at the Crusoe always does a beautiful job for us. I'm yeah, for so sure. pumped to see them and um, you know I, I'm, I'm so excited to do that. So that's in February of next year before I leave for the States. So okay. tickets for your Sudbury show at the end of October you get at mediumjlane.com. That is right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had so much fun chatting with you. Today. I did too. It was fun. And make sure to check those dates I gave I you. I certainly will. She gave me a sort of an impromptu reading as we were waiting to, to get started on our on our chat. So that's pretty cool. We'll look into that. I really want to thank you for your time. I had so much fun chatting thank with you. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed my time with you too, Mark. Thank yeah. you for having me here today. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you very much for uh, for watching the video. Remember, mediumjlane.com. Check her out on, uh, on social media. Check her out on the internet. You might even see her in the store somewhere. She is a local girl, so take Hi, care. Yeah. Thanks for joining. Thank you. I want to thank Medium J Lane for having tea with me today. I want to thank the Cedar Nest uh, Decor Cafe on Cedar Street for hosting us. This is the coolest little spot in Sudbury. You guys got to come and check it out. If you have an idea for someone you'd like to see me have tea with, let us know in the comments below. For Sudbury.com, I'm Mark Gentili.